see, how far back shall we go? I think uh, for a long time, um, Barry McGee and Margaret Kilgallen were really active, uh, working um, on their own work and promoting their own work to some extent, but also um, they were very uh, conscientious about, about promoting the work of their peers in, from the Bay Area. And I think that Margaret had been talking um, to Jeffrey about several different possibilities for exhibitions in the gallery um, in Dutch projects. Um, and one of the exhibitions that she had been discussing was about Bay Area, Bay Area painters, I think, and they had been discussing that for a while. But um, when Margaret Kilgallen passed away, uh, uh, Jeffrey Deitch wanted to do a memorial exhibition um, of her work, including her work, but also um, of her peer group. And so I, I was brought in um, as a friend of Margaret's and Barry's and also as a colleague of theirs. Um, and I worked really closely, actually, with Barry McGee to to figure out which artists and what aspects of Margaret's work we wanted to uh, to think about, and I think you know it was a really traumatic time because we we're all kind of still really in mourning. And I mean, I think to think back to that time now is is very difficult. Uh, um, the period that the exhibition came out of, but um, needless to say, uh, we we wanted to do something positive or creative or, you know, we needed, we needed a release and we needed a ritual and I think that uh, the exhibition ended up serving that purpose. We, uh, I think the artists in total were 10 and um, the installation period was near, I guess the, the longest installation period for um, Eamon or Jaron and Christian Hansen was two weeks so they were in the galleries like, you know, Non-stop, and I think that there was, a, you know, they, they set the tone for like an energy of, um, you know, co kind of contemplation and action, and you know, by the time Barry came and hauled these the big truck in there, and um, you know, we were we had a totally different kind of ball of wax than than maybe a normal exhibition, and then. Uh, I guess the installation period, you, you probably have some shots of that, but the installation period ended up lasting, um, you know, two weeks, like 24 hours a day. <laughs> so I guess in normal people's time, that's probably four weeks of installation. Um, there was some serious squatting going on in the gallery, some banjo playing. And A lot of communing with, um, among friends and, and colleagues, and it was it was a really intense time.
important to me that the exhibition didn't exploit Margaret or her career or the baby. Um, and just, you know, like, it's such a tragic story to hear, a, to, to hear uh, about the illness and the baby and, and, and Margaret's passing. And yet, um, that's such a private story. And we didn't really want to share that publicly, but we really wanted to go through it together. And so I think uh, for the exhibition, we never said that it was a memorial, I don't think. Maybe in the press later it came out. But, um, but what it was more centered around was Margaret's work, you know, rather than Margaret's, you know, simply like her, just her friends. As it turns out, most of the artists were friends of hers. And I think everybody at least knew her. Um, and of course, some of the some of the people were close to her friends, but but the but the organization was more based on her work and what I perceived as like uh, influences on her work, you know, through speaking with Barry and from what I had known, um, doing some research about her work myself, and and so we had artists like Buzz Blur, who um, is you know a conceptual male artist and um, and you know really like the like a hobo graffiti writer, and just so looked up to by you know Bill Daniels and um, Margaret and Barry and a whole flock of young graffiti writers, and um, so we really needed him there as an anchor, as like um, k kind of a, a everyday you know an everyday practitioner that was kind of a little bit separated from the traditional art world, all the way you know to um, Cheryl who. Cheryl Dunn, who uh, does a lot of commercial photography, and yet you know has has uh, a real kind of investment and in also like a kind of documentary photography that I think um, Margaret was also influenced by, and um, or, and also influenced. Um, I think uh, Eamon um, is making these works that these paintings that have so much to do with storytelling and I think that was a really storytelling and folklore which is another really important uh, aspect of Margaret's work and so these are kind of um, some of the ideas that we're thinking about in assembling the artists. You go down and you feel you know like you have to you have to deal with this loss you have to deal with this loss but then ultimately you have to deal with living and you know and I think that loss also teaches you a lot about living. And I think you know for us you know who really love Margaret you know what's not what would, what about her life would make you feel sad, really? Because she got, you know, she got a lot out of this life. You know, tragically short, but but man, when she was here, <laughs> she, you know, she did she did more than a lot of us will do. Yeah. So I think that that's you know that's like that's the joy aspect to the to the work and to the show that I think was really communicated to the public. And still to this day, people ask me, you know, like what. If people ask me like what work I've done or something, and I say, "Oh, we did this little show over at Deitch," so many people remember that show, and nobody knows that it was about loss. You know, everybody was like, "Oh man, you know, there are people." There's there, that was so unique for New York. You know, I know that a lot of um, well-respected artists in you know practicing in New York were, were really enthusiastic about um, you know this group of artists, you know, however one might categorize them, you know, these Bay Area, mostly Bay Area artists and um, kind of the, the freedom in their work and, and, um, and every, you know, there's so many comments about how this work is not like, you know, the traditional work you see in, in um, New York galleries, which might have everything to do with the relative success of these artists, you know, since that time. Um, and I think that, you know, also, you know, like when you're putting things together, you're always, you're always excited about working with people and you're always nervous about what, when you're working with new work or new commissions. But um, I was, I was enthusiastic about who, about all the participants, but then everything was better than I expected it to be. And the exhibition as a whole was, was, you know, just really, really vital. Yeah.
on, and this is like all about uh, love and um, remembering to uh, just uh, just real good thoughts. And so we're we're really happy that y'all came out. And um, this this band is from uh, San Francisco too, and uh, they're they're playing in front of some art that is uh, of San Francisco. That's where we are right now, Spirit. Trap Star. I make films, I make little shorts, I try to make little shorts that are kind of like um, avant-garbage, kind of uh, fun, funky animation mixed with live action, and um, yeah, just, you know, little documentaries. I've known Barry since, um, since high school. I've known Barry since high school, and we became really good friends in high school. Um, and then we went from there to the community school, um, city college, and um, I was doing photography. My main study was photography, and he was basically, you know, he was doing drawings and stuff. And then he got a scholarship to go to the San Francisco Guard Institute, and he was telling me about it. He's like, oh, dude, you should just, you know, put your portfolio together and you know, go. You know, it's an expensive school, but if you get the scholarship, it's totally doable. And you know, um, so he kind of just encouraged. I mean, like Barry. I mean, he's he's so encouraging. I mean, he's like. I mean, what I like about Barry and Marga, that whole world, is basically it's like they bring a whole community together. It's not about, you know, them and only them. It's more about the community, and they realize that. And I think that's really, I think it makes everybody richer, you know, in the work. And, and just and it's, it's more interesting to see what the younger generation is doing, you know, constantly and being open to meeting people and seeing people and, you know, sharing work. I think it's really important that there's not so much of there out there, you know, it's like so much about the individuality here and you know everybody just kind of clamming up and doing their thing and you know secretive and all that kind of thing I think it's it's not it doesn't work that way I think it's nicer it's, I mean that's what art is about is just sharing the community but you know. the outcome for, for being involved with the show for me it was more um, inspirational it kind of like just kind of put fire up my butt kind of like you know get on with it and not you know dwell on things and not just you know live inside your head and you know it's all about ideas ideas and you know it's really all about just getting out there and doing it I mean that's the bottom line and I think it's just just to see the, the energy and feel the energy from you know everybody around you that's just everybody's just getting on getting getting on with it you know and I think that's the secret is to, to make an artist just to get on with it and that's the hardest part is to just you know find the time and doing it that definitely kind of like we I'm kind of like in a weird transition right now I'm trying to figure out you know where to go next with things and, um, and what's good about the why they alone is seeing these guys that are doing it I mean they're doing it they're just doing it day and night they don't you know they're whatever you know getting whatever jobs they're getting and dealing with it and you know just being really low-key and uh, and finding the resources and just getting on with it and that's something to to admire you know that you don't get caught up in the whole hype and you know wanting that you need this and you need that to really work and you need the perfect environment you need all this nonsense and you don't because it's never perfect, you just have to do it. So that's what, basically that's what I got. I mean, I got really fired up from, 
from that show is just to get out there and do things. And uh, when you have an idea, it's just go out and do it. And don't think about the outcome of it, just do it. You know? So I think in, in that sense, it's definitely kind of woken me up a lot. You know, now it's, you know, it's constant reevaluation. You gotta figure out where you're at. And... I mean, I think for the most part, people were, my feeling was like, the art show was almost secondary in a way to everybody coming together or being a, being brought together for that for that for the honoring of Margaret and especially for that show because she helped you know it was her idea originally as I as I've been told you know so. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of unspoken uh, conversations going on. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely like sacred space. Yeah. I I just loved how everybody was like camping out. Nobody yeah. wanted to leave, and everybody had their little like shacks, you know. Yeah. I actually slept in Bill's space the night of the opening. <laughs> Cause I had to get on a fucking plane at like noon. I was up till 7:30 in the morning or something, and I, my, all my other spaces had been cleaned up. It's like the thing that I like about what's people like Barry and Chris and Margaret getting so much attention is because I believe and stand behind their ethics and who they are and. They're not um, grossly elaborate, they're efficient. Th these are all things that are important to me. Their, their work stems from like people, you know, people and real things and things. And of course it's like something I'm interested in, but it's, and it's directly related to them, to, you know, and, uh, and I'm drawn to that, you know, obviously it's like, we're all drawn to it. That's why we inspire each other and why we help we're pals and whatnot and it's not about I don't know I mean I I don't really know what it's like in other cities but I think other cities tend to be more competitive artist to artist you know yeah, it's... whereas here it's more it's and or people's motive is like you know this whole idea of schmoozing and it's like well I think people are realize are realizing it's like with the show in New York that I had it's like the reason I did that whole wall of other people's work is because um, because for one that's like this is what I this is this is these, these 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 are people that inspire me and that I that I am fueled by as as well as like a million other things. And also, it's like, wow, here's a, here's a space. I don't need all this space, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna utilize this space for, for other people to see as many other works as possible, if it's in my control. And um, I was glad, I was really glad that people like press you in New York kind of, they got it and they, and they respected it, you know. Ignore cut.
find my shit, Buzz Blur is going to be in there. They're going to, they're going to find a, a Buzz Blur archive. I have a studio next to, to uh, the Santa Fe yard. Uh, trains are going by and 
course, I was a big graffiti fan from the get-go and saw the stuff I'd never seen before, you know, it's kind of sketches, you know. And uh, there was one, Bozo Texino, you know, just the name grabbed me. And, uh, it's a really beautiful image, really simple, with a little infinity-shaped cowboy hat. There, there is a, a person and there's several people and there's a myth. There's actually a really rich myth that goes back more or less to the turn of the century. This is a hobo jungle. It's a campsite. It's night. Uh, we roll, roll down here with our bedroll. We'll have some little shelter here from the storm in case it rains. We've got a campfire going here. Uh, campfire uh, is images of trips and travels and places we've been and uh, shots from the train and, and the landscape going by. People will be sitting around the campfire, kind of illuminated by the flicker, flicker enhanced by uh, rescanning the 16 and the Super 8 off the screen with uh, with faster shutter speeds on a DV camera. Okay. A little fire deal there. And then we've got the moon, and in the moon are uh, the people, the artists, the boxcar artists, and there's going to be shots of them writing, writing their monikers, doing their tags, and um, so yeah, the moon's kind of like the spirits, the people that you see, you know, when you look up at the moon. Because the moon is a big reflector, right? As everybody knows. Especially if you're a filmmaker. <laughs> and um, I see the moon. The moon sees me. The moon sees someone I want to see. So, if you stare at the moon long enough, you'll see Margaret. Because that's who we'd like to see, actually. <laughs> you know, basically, I had this film that I could not make, and um, I had to do something with the material. And uh, the opportunity for the show came up, and I said, "Well, maybe, maybe there's some way to, you know, to get this material into a room in a way that doesn't require me to sit down and, and cut the film." I guess I always kind of fooled around with multiple projection, kind of sculptural, or you know. Um, filling a room or using the space or using volume to, um, to put film loops into or to project into. But I never thought of that as installation art, really. It was more of just like a film thing, a film exercise or, you know, kind of a performance or something. I guess my way into that show and into that scene, really, why not? I was more on the periphery. I, I was never really into the visual art scene in San Francisco so much because I was really in the film scene. And I was based out of ATA and I worked at Film Arts Foundation. And most of what I did on a daily and weekly basis was the, the film scene, the experimental and documentary film scene. But Rigo and Barry and the Clarion Alley Mural Project were all parts of my world just because they were my neighborhood and my friends and I never really saw my visual art hooking up with that because I had been a photographer before that and even though I had this part of me that was a visual artist in photography it didn't seem like it related to what was going on in the neighborhood at all. I guess my link to this show and this group of people was really graffiti because this group of people practiced graffiti and had this presence on the street that I followed for years, kind of as a fan. Like, like I knew all of the people in this show for years before I met them, just through their street work. I, I knew their graffiti, um, I, I knew where they put it up, uh, but I didn't really know who they were, and I would sometimes ask around and I'd kind of get their names, but um, I really, my intimate connection with them was just through their work on the street. And, um, and I felt like I had this relationship with him just through that, you know, 3 a.m., you know, wait a minute, somebody just put this here. How did this get here? Where are they? And you'd look around and go, like, this wasn't here yesterday and it's here now. Where are they? So, kind of the relationship I had to all those painters was the same relationship I had to the subjects of my graffiti film, the hobo graffiti film. Because that film started with me seeing this kind of graffiti and being completely enamored with it and completely taken by the mystery of who the people are and it became a, just a, a jihad, really an obsession to, to, to learn what, you know, where the stuff was coming from, the freight graffiti. And it started as a still photography project, just obsessively documenting freight graffiti and um, asking questions and, you know, kind of trying to spiral in on 
the the real the reality behind the story. After whatever, after ten or twelve years of chasing these railroad graffiti artists and having tons of photos and all this film footage, I didn't know what to do with. Um, Barry, actually, I was roommates with a friend of Barry's sister, <laughs> <laughs> and he said. Oh yeah, you want to meet Barry? Sure, I know. I'm just like, yeah, man, for sure, I want to meet Barry. And, and so we met, and we're like, yeah. And I've been chasing freight graffiti. And he was like, oh really? Oh yeah, I'm very curious about that. So one day he and Margaret came over, and I had the flatbed set up in my room. And actually, basically, my room was the flatbed and a bed next to it. <laughs> and I went through all my footage, and we talked freight graph, and it was really a blast. And I just exhausted myself, you know, showing all this footage and telling everything I knew about, you know, the freight graphs, you know, you know, John Easley and Bozo and Herbie, and um, I guess that was how I really initially connected with that scene. So it, it was, um, that was the time when the stuff on the street was really blowing up, and those people were coming out of um, the Art Institute or whatever, and um, they really definitely created a new thing, you know, they created definitely a new type of graffiti and a new type of painting, which I didn't know about really, because all I was seeing was the graffiti. city scenes from Taiwan, from Taipei mostly. And uh, Margaret, I think she kn knew that I was doing the show and she um, gave um, Jeffrey Dutch a call and, you know, said, uh, that told him or suggested he go there and check out the paintings or something, which is very nice of her, you know. And um, so I guess he went there and saw the paintings and then At some point, and you know, Barry came by, and, and his brother and Angie, and they asked me if I wanted to be part of that. So I don't know exactly when that was. Probably, I don't know, yeah, late the year before or something like that, or early earlier that year. But I was actually in Taiwan. Uh, when I heard that Margaret that was no longer here, you know, and um, it was a trip. Um, I think a lot of them end up evolving, like one thing leads to another, you know, certain things kind of spark different ideas, 
and uh, but I'm always just kind of noticing everything around me, you know, my surroundings, trying to like pick certain things out of it that kind of I I don't know, kind of show how crazy we are, <laughs> yeah. how weird we are, you know, and uh, just all of our like idiosyncrasies, I guess. So it's always kind of like I'm always, you know, walking down the street noticing things and whatnot. Yeah, I think I kind of viewed like miniature golf as kind of, um, kind of like, uh, like a quest, you know, like an odyssey through like all these really strange places. It's like represents, you know, moving through some trying to get to the end goal and there's not really anything you don't really win anything no one ever really keeps score <laughs> and you can cheat really easily <laughs> and yet it's like so fun <laughs> you know and like different there's a lot of different themes that arise while you're playing it you know like death you know yeah it'd just be like there sitting there and then when you actually like start looking at it and you know Realizing like that's kind of what it's about. So when you, you put gel medium on the sketch pad, on the drawing, and then you put it on the canvas, and you let it dry, and then you take off the paper, you scrape it off, water and stuff, and it leaves the ink line it's stuck in the gel medium.
I'm, I'm interested in art that has like some kind of uh, relationship to, to life. I think that there is art that's not relating to life out there. I mean, I think everybody makes art. So there, I mean, there, it's obviously, it's like a, it's like a, um, I mean, there's a relationship to life and that somebody made it, but I think that there's a lot of art that's, that's really caught up in art, art history and uh, uh, speaking to this really small group of people that involves like uh, really people interested in art education and, and the museums and all that and it's, it's really limited and it's really limiting and I think it really alienates a lot of people. I think it's really, and personally I think it's really uninteresting art. This art that, that speaks just to art history and that seem, it seems to be very inclusive and it seems to be like really up here and I personally am just totally not interested in making art that is up here at all. I want art that is right here. I want and art that's about like uh, life and, and, and I really don't like art that just doesn't involve love. I just like barely, when we were in New York, you know, I barely knew, I mean I knew kind of what I was going to do, but I didn't think that mountain was going to take so long, you know. And since I got there, started like getting all the, all the wood from the neighborhood and stuff, you know, just finding wood and scavenging everything. And, uh, but anyway, the point is, is that the most important thing was to make a mountain that was like a solid looking mountain and with a cave in it, like a womb-like cave. And then, and then, I mean, I didn't really even have paint, hardly any paintings to put inside of it, but like, whatever, I mean... Months before I said, you know, I was going to make this this mountain, but it we, was we, going to be a mountain range of small mountains. But then I then I just it just developed into that thing, and then with a, to have a, a a gallery, it first was going to be open up gallery, but then I decided to have it like this like kind of like secure like a, a mother nature kind of like in the earth kind of that was the idea that it was be this like this kind of like safe place. You know, and then, but then in the end, you know, I just like, you know, those paintings, I finished them up, like, right. Well, I was so, there. <laughs> yeah, like five minutes before. I mean, really. I mean, some of them, five minutes before, and uh, Joe and, and uh, some other people were helping me put them in frames and shit. But fuck, man. The mountain is more important. It was cool the way uh, the mountain and Barry's van, you know, ground to you. They were both like mountains. And basically, I've been painting these swastikas lately, uh, kind of vaguely like a swastika, and because I think I think the swastika is the worst, one of the worst appropriated things, uh, images. You know, we all know the history of it, but it's like uh, so. This is kind of like, and this is a play on 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 you know that symbol as love, that symbol as hate. And basically, I think that uh, fasc capitalism is the fascist dictator that we have to worry about. Because I think that's what's fucking up the world is money. I think, like, people, um, you know, they want to survive. And it's like, a, we're animals, basically. And it's like survival of the fittest. But we also have this analytical mind. And we also have, like, humanity and hearts. You know what I mean? And that's supposed to, to me, I'm just doing these things. It's like, it's like but it's casual. You know what I mean? It's like you sometimes you can't even tell that it's like making you be fucked, or it's that it's like doing fuck things. Uh, this greed, <coughs> greed that we all have to live with, uh, but it's always there. So I just kind of like made it this color, and it's all the different colors because you know, like there's all these different types of. It's colors are supposed to represent all the different types of people, and uh, it's supposed to be like the colors of the rainbow and uh, total diversity, but all dealing with fa the fascism of capitalism. That we, it's always with us, no matter what.
know Margaret the small amount of time that I did because I think she had, has, ha, had and has still a very, um, she's a super powerful, you know, force and really inspiring and really, she's also, uh, she's like a warrior, you know, she's like, she's tough, but she's, you know, elegant, you know, and that her work was, was that to me, you know, and she was just uh, a really, like, graceful, beautiful person, and her presence was really, was really, really powerful and really inspiring, and I'm really glad I got to know her.